The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of Take Shape for Life health coaches or clients. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to healthy living and weight loss will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a physician before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Take Shape for Life team. All right, welcome to the Habits of Health call, everybody. So glad to be here with you guys. Um, we are Amber and Jared Smithson, Certified Health Coaches with Take Shape for Life, and glad that you are joining us. Um, hopefully you had a, a great Thanksgiving this last week. So let's go ahead and get going. So this is us. Um, before we get too much into our story, though, um, this call is for lots of different people. It's for clients, it's for health coaches, health professionals, um, or we might have some on the call who are just checking out to Take Shape for Life and seeing what we're all about. So this is a great call uh, to hop on. Even if you're checking us out, we should give you a lot of helpful information, a lot of value added. And you may hear stories and, and comments from people who are in weight loss phase or transition or optimizing their health after weight loss phase. And uh, we'll try to, to keep you updated so you don't get too lost. <laughs> So uh, before we get to our stories, I want to throw a poll out to everybody. Let's see. I just want to know uh, what time zone are you in? So I want to get you, get you uh, interactive. So go ahead and hit your, hit your uh, phone screen or vote on your computer. I just want to see what time zones we have represented tonight. So I'll give you a couple more seconds. Hurry, hurry. Whoa. They're coming in. Big commitment from East Coast. That's right. Okay, I'm going to end polling in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, so I'll share the results. Looks like we have 16% uh, Pacific, 22% Mountain, 20% Central, 39% East Coast, and 1% Other. Other, Hawaii. Wow. yeah. Never know. <laughs> All right, we'll stop sharing those results. So welcome everybody. I love that. We got lots of East Coasters on tonight. Uh, before, before the bed, they're joining us. So we're your Habits of Health hosts tonight, and uh, this is this is us before before the habits of health, right? Yeah, um, my story was uh, I was skinny for most of my life, but I wasn't healthy, um, especially when it came to uh, uh, walking into the kitchen. I was eating all the wrong things at all the wrong times, uh, things like that. I had no schedule. I didn't uh, I didn't know what I was putting in my mouth. I was just looking for something to stuff in there, and I uh, I managed to maintain a weight, uh, a, a healthy weight. Um, some would say good genetics, right? Um, my family was mostly skinny, um, but a lot, a lot of exercise. I played 17 years of competitive basketball. Um, so that helped me. But um, as soon as I, my lifestyle slowed down, I started gaining weight. Um, I got pregnant three times. Um, I didn't have any babies though. So, um, uh, our children are yeah, yours though. Yeah. She, she had the babies. <laughs> so, um, so I, I went back to exercising and I was just beating up my body and I really wasn't losing very much weight. So, uh, when I found take shape for life, I managed to, uh, get, uh, I, I lost 50 pounds total 25 with take shape for life. And it was way faster and I felt way better than I yeah. did doing it the other way. More simple. I can attest to that. I lost my weight before I knew about Take Shape for Life and um, 35 pounds. And it, it took me about seven months and uh, just doing it on my own, just reading about health and, and uh, counting every single calorie and working out every single day. And, and it was good, you know, I was getting healthy. But what I found is that when I was trying to help other people, they're coming to me, Amber, how did you do that? How did you um, get healthy? Um, I, a lot of people were like, oh, that, that sounds like that's too hard. <laughs> I was one of those people. <laughs> that's true. So I found Take Shape for Life, and I really found a program that was simple and straightforward. So we're, we're super excited to, uh, to share some time with you. So just as a, uh, a start off, maybe a few of you are not familiar with what we do in Take Shape for Life. Um, we focus on healthy body, healthy mind, healthy finances. We have safe and simple nutrition plans. I love that it's not just one size fits all. We have a five and one weight loss plan, an act, optimal active plan. If you're a heavy exerciser, 
um, three and three for when you're optimizing after weight loss phase, nursing mom, teen, seniors, diabetic, there's all kinds of good stuff. Then we have the habits of health. Um, this is what really sold us on Take Shape for Life. Uh, we read Dr. Anderson's habits of health like over a weekend. Uh, and we're like, this is how we want to live the rest of our lives. And, uh, and, and I keep it right next to my computer here um, every single day. I work with my uh, clients through, uh, through the books. And, uh, and this is how we've lived our lives for almost the last eight years. Yep. And of course, your personal health coach. And we have a few health coaches on tonight that we're going to ask to, to help uh, share and share their stories and help present. And uh, we just have tons of fun with our clients and also this health coach community too. So before we talk about this slide, I want to launch our next poll here. Okay, in what phase of the program are you right now? So you might be in weight loss, transition, optimization. Some people think that's called maintenance, but we're optimizing. We don't maintain, right? <laughs> and then haven't started yet. So I just want to see who our audience is. Oh, we got a lot of people in weight loss. I'll give you a couple more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, share results. So we have 66% on the line who are in weight loss phase. So congratulations, working on your health. Um, 5% transition, 26% in optimization. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Quarter of us. And then we got 3% haven't started yet. So welcome. We're glad that you're checking us out. All right. So I'm going to throw this over to um, Jamil. Jamil, tell us a little bit about this slide. Yes, definitely. Uh, can you guys hear me okay, Amber and Derek? Yep. All right, so thank you so much for allowing me to come in and spend some time with you guys. I think this is one of my favorite calls because no matter if we are clients currently or health coaches, we are all still clients. So um, working with and trying to optimize and get better is definitely something that I've enjoyed doing. So really, as we're preparing for our journeys, lots of us have already started on our journeys with Take Shape for Life, but really it starts with preparing for the journey. And I think that as we um, work with our coaches, uh, they're going to do a great job of helping us get prepared for this journey with maybe getting some of the not so great food out of those cupboards and starting to uh, tell our friends and families and our different su uh, support systems around us uh, the journey that we're about to embark upon and just getting mentally ready for what's going to take place over the next few weeks, a few months. Uh, most of us uh, have gotten started and we're looking to reach a healthy weight. I think a lot of our clients, whether they're doing a five and one or five and two and nursing moms program or whatnot, um, but if they're doing a five and one, they're gonna have a great chance of balancing their blood sugars. And as they do that, uh, they're just going to start feeling good. And many of you guys understand what I'm talking about right now. You just start feeling really, really good. And you're going to stay in that weight loss phase until you probably uh, get to wherever it is that you want to get to. And what I've seen happen is generally most folks are uh, changing their goals. I don't know if you guys have seen that, Amber and Jared, but I know me specifically when I started, I uh, didn't believe that I could get uh, to a nice healthy weight. And so I kind of told my coaches a weight that I actually thought I could. But most folks will change their goals along the journey is what I've seen. And what's beautiful is uh, with Take Shape for Life, we don't just say come in and lose some weight. We actually will start to show you how to keep that weight off along the way. So that's where you start to see uh, phase three and phase four. So once you get to where you want to get to, then you'll go into transition and eating uh, very, very healthy. So we actually will start to show you how to move away from some of those fuelings that you've got really, really used to. And at that point, uh, we'll start to calculate the sort of calories that you need for your particular exercise level. Um, and we'll start to show you how to add in more food groups slowly. There's a the little man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> from more vegetables to more fruits to more uh, proteins. Uh, and so we'll walk you through that slowly, step by step. And along the way, gosh, if we don't learn how to change our habits, guys, then it doesn't really matter what sort of program that we do because history has shown us you will always go back to what's comfortable. So and Take Shape for Life, really work with your health coach. And Jared talked about that little book called Dr. A's Habits of Health book. 
So you'll really want to dive into this along the way and work with your coach on changing that underlying structure as to how you've typically done things and work on those habits. And then the last two phases are amazing. None of us wants to go back to where we started. None of us, me included. And so we have to, uh, in step five, we have to really not, I think Amber said it great, not, not uh, maintaining, but we want to consistently get better every single day. And that's really optimizing for our health and for our journey. And step six, guys, is just living that longer, healthier life. And what's amazing is as we do that, you'll start to see that people that love us most will most likely start to do that and take the same sort of habits in their lives. I love that. Jamil, seriously, we could end the call now. It's perfect. <laughs> we'll keep going, though. I guess. We'll, we'll stick with you a few more minutes. But. I love what, uh, what he was mentioning. Uh, he said he used the word destination. We're not a destination vacation here, right? <laughs> You're not just going there for a certain period of time. We, we want your whole life to, to be optimal. So um, we're, we're leading you through that path of, of constantly optimizing and getting a little bit better every single day. Yeah. I mean, we've been doing this eight years, and I still work on things every single day that I want to get a little bit better at. Kind of crazy that reaching a healthy weight is step two, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, oh, you know what? I did the survey early, so I'll just skip that. All right, I'm going to throw it over to Liz Jensen, Certified Health Coach. And Liz, go ahead and take yourself off mute. And tell us a little, just give us like an overview, a quick overview of some things um, that we're going to be talking about tonight. Great. Well, thanks so much for letting me jump on this call with you. This is really one of my very favorite topics of all time, because this really is the secret to not only losing the weight, but keeping it off long term. It's one of the biggest things that we teach. And so um, we're going to go over just some simple tips on how to do this. Um, we want to get our metabolism going within 30 minutes of waking up. And then we don't want to go over three hours without eating. We want to keep our blood sugar balanced. And we want to have small protein carb balanced meals every three hours um, to, and keep it simple um, to be able to do that. And then, of course, the water is a huge thing. Drinking more water, that's going to help you stay full longer. It's going to help your digestion. It helps in so many ways. But getting our water in is going to be a, you know, an important step in our journey also. Yeah, and maybe give them a little overview on our on uh, our education as well. Oh, that's one thing I love the most is how much we learn on this program. And um, when I got started on the program, I mean, all of you probably can raise your hand and join in with me, but how many of you guys have um, started a diet or lost weight and then gained it back because you didn't learn anything, right? I grew up in the fat-free phase where all I cared about was how much fat something had. And it got me into um, debt to my body. And so I loved how much I learned on this program. I actually researched this program before I started it and just loved all the education that comes with it. And I loved it not just for myself, but these are things that we can teach our family. You can probably hear I have six little kids and they're being pretty loud right now. But um, that's one thing I love is everything that I learn, I don't just keep it to myself. I teach my family this. And I think it's the best thing to be able to give your family and your friends education to be able to be healthier for the long term. And um, another thing with rewiring our brain, one thing that we really touch on that um, I never even thought about before this program is um, retraining our brain to be more mindful and really recognize our triggers because we all have triggers whether we recognize them or not. For me, it's stress. Um, when my kids are, you know, just at my wits end and I just feel like I need chocolate, like that's my trigger, that the chocolate and, the, and I, just being able to recognize that and retrain my brain on how to handle that has been huge and being more mindful. And, um, you know, reaching a healthy weight, that's just an added bonus to becoming healthy. You're going to be um, feeling better, having more energy, just enjoying life better. And the number on the scale, that's just going to be a bonus to all of it. I love that. And just... That goes back to what Jamil was talking about. Step two, reach a healthy weight, right? Yeah, and I think part of the education is also understanding what the program is. Our program is eating six small meals a day, carb protein balance, lots of water, de-stressing, uh, uh, adequate sleep, all these things. Now your plan is going to change. Uh, some of you are on the five and one plan for weight loss or four and two for a more active lifestyle. 75%. 75%. <laughs> uh, but 
but the same principles principles apply across our entire lives. Right. Yep. And Jared, I love how you say that. Like, I will always be on the program. The program is not the food. It's the healthy lifestyle. So I'm, gonna, I'm a client forever. I'm always going to be on the program. So I love that you brought that up. That is so true, Liz. I love that. So Jared, do you want to go over some of this? Yeah, this was one of the things that sold me because I used to get like the sugar shakes all the time. And it was because, oh, jazz yeah, hands. yeah, jazz hands, right? <laughs> uh, I'm not much of a thespian though. Um, <laughs> so uh, I used to eat like the graph on the left. Um, where if I did eat anything, it was like an orange juice or a bagel or something quick and easy, fast food, things like that, and massive blood sugar spike, and then as a result, a massive insulin response. And uh, David Jenkins at the University of Toronto was really a pioneer in low glycemic eating. And what they did was they took uh, this group of people and they split them into two groups. They ate the same foods, the same calories, everything, and you'll see the difference. Uh, Three, one group was eating three traditional, three squares, as they say, and the other group was eating six smaller meals. And uh, you see that uh, the group that was eating the six smaller meals, they lost more weight. They, uh, they suggest, they said that they were less hungry, uh, reduced cholesterol by 15% and blood insulin by 28%. So those are massive shifts. And uh, so this is the way that we, we want to eat um, in order to maintain that nice, healthy weight uh, but not only just weight, but have uh, consistent balanced energy throughout the day, uh, rather than I would, I would eat something or bagel or orange juice or something like that, go start playing basketball. And then I was like, woo, uh, it was crazy. So um, I feel a lot better now uh, at age 42 than even I did when I was still competing at age 20. Yeah, that's such a good point, Jared, that seriously, if you don't take anything else from this webinar tonight, take this principle that if you eat the same foods that you're eating now if you break them up in smaller amounts six times a day rather than three times a day i mean seriously right there optimization phase is uh so much easier right there um okay i'm gonna throw it over to liz again to talk a little bit about glycemic index if you would Awesome. Um, well, this is one thing that I love is because a lot of us think that glycemic index only applies to diabetics, but really it's the secret to um, energy level staying level, your, your metabolism running better. And so glycemic index um, is really how your body reads sugar. Um, your body turns carbs into sugar, whether it's a candy bar, whether it's a piece of fruit, it turns it into sugar. Um, so if you look on this chart here, uh, we want to stay in the green, the low glycemic. So these are things, if you're on the five in one program, you're lean and green, those are all low glycemic foods that you're eating right now, your meal replacements. So um, they all have a number. So 100 is pure sugar, zero is nothing. You know, so you wanna stay at you know, around 50 or below most of the time. And then occasionally if you're going to have something that's in the higher glycemic, like the red section, then you wanna pair it with something in the low glycemic, that's going to balance it out a little bit more. And so learning to always um, pair something that's low glycemic, if you're having something that's higher, that will help balance your blood sugars out a little bit more. And so the combination really does matter. And I would encourage everyone to, to you know, copy this list or get a list like this and put it on your fridge and start practicing this habit. If you're on the five in one program, you don't have to think about it because it's all laid out for you. It's already already perfectly balanced for you, which is awesome. But um, I like to practice it and have my clients practice it with their kids. So when my kids are having a snack, usually it's a carb, right? That's usually what you grab for. Um, have them go to the list and say, you know what, go, go get a protein to go with that. Do you want a boiled egg or do you want a string cheese with that? And so just getting in the habit of always taking a protein and a carb together, even if it's not a healthy carb, which most of the time it, you want it to be healthy, but even if it's not, always have a protein with it that's going to help um, balance it out a little bit better. But staying on the, you know, the healthy list for most of the time is key. But this is something that you can definitely start practicing with your kids and your spouse, um, just getting used to what the healthy choices are. I love that, Liz. And just like you said, the TSFL feelings, um, they're already balanced. Like, there's no guesswork. You already know that it's, that it's perfect. That's why I continue to use the feelings into optimization phase, because I don't know, I didn't get less, uh, Busy just because I got more healthy. <laughs> hey, and uh, chocolate mint, 
crunch bars taste like uh, those Girl Scout cookies. So who doesn't <laughs> like those things? So uh, the thing I love most about this uh, this list is remember those tests you had to take when you're like in first grade. And you had to match the left column with the right column and stuff. And it was always super easy, but like I would go so fast through them that I'd miss one. Well, you can match anything with on the left list to anything on the right list, and you're always right. That's your kind of test. So right? that's my kind of test, and you can't <laughs> be wrong. I love that. Okay, let's throw out another survey because you know a lot of times um, people think, oh, you just gotta like exercise it up, and exercise is great, right? I mean, that's what the Habits of Health call was on two weeks ago, but um, really for let, let's just do this one. How many calories burn one pound of fat? Let's see. Launch the poll. Okay, I've got to wake you guys up. Start clicking on your screen here. Okay, how many calories do you need to burn to lose one pound? Oh, we got a bunch of smarty pounds. Okay, so let's see. You got 35 as an option, 350, 3,500, or 35,000. So I'll give you a five, four, three, two, one, end. I'm glad that 0% said 35 because that's what you <laughs> get like watching TV for an hour. <laughs> yeah, so let's see. We had 79% got it right on the nose. So 3,500 calories to, to burn to lose one pound of fat. So it, that's interesting if you like think of how many calories that – you know, you're eating and, and then how much you burn. And we'll have another question. Actually, I'm just going to throw it at you right now. So let's see. Yeah. How many miles would an average 175 pound person need to run to burn 3,500 calories? Oh, people have read the habits of hell. <laughs> this, is <in> the <laughs> this is in the habits of hell. So, and this is the, this is the interesting thing. Like I don't weigh 175 pounds. I am like 135. Yeah. So when I run, I'm actually going to burn less calories even. Yep. So I'd have to run way more miles. But okay, we're going to stop the polling. You got five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so we have uh, nobody thought that it was a third of a mile. <laughs> Good job. We had 33% <laughs> who thought maybe it's 3.5 miles. And then we had 67% who thought 35 miles. It's 35 miles. It's kind of crazy, yeah. right? Yep, that's crazy. Thirty five miles. Who wants miles to go out and run a marathon every day? To lose one pound <laughs> to of lose fat, one pound right? Of fat. <laughs> Not me. Not me. <laughs> I've never run a marathon. <laughs> so really, it's about what you're putting in your body. I mean, what do they say? Eighty five percent. This is not like a don't quote <laughs> me on this statistic compliance team. But you you know you gotta. It's like eighty five percent of what's happening with your weight is happening on your fork, right? So I'm gonna throw it back to Jamil. And tell us a little bit about, about this, Jamil. I would love to. And, I, and I, I think the last slide is really funny because, Jared, I was like you. I was a big exercise enthusiast. And I, I couldn't figure out why for over a year I wasn't losing any weight because um, I was trying to exercise it all off. And it's just, uh, what a frustrating process. Yeah, take a look at this slide because this slide uh, means so much to me. I think what's interesting in our journeys as clients is we start to learn about these things from day one, from really from the lean and greens that, uh, that our program allows us to, to make on our own. But if you look at this plate, this is what we call the nine inch plate. And the color coding is really dividing up the different um, uh, foods that we should have on these different plates. Now, immediately, before I start this program, I think mine looked like all starches. Uh, so there's no vegetables, no fruit, but, you know, no proteins, but all starches. And sometimes what happens is in our households, uh, our plates are much, much bigger than nine-inch plates. And so it doesn't allow us to portion control very well. And that's one of the challenges. So as we are on this call and as we are out there, you know, doing some shopping for the holidays and things like that. Let's make sure that we all have the nine inch plates within our own households. And we're being really mindful that 50% of that plate is going to be our vegetables and our fruits. 25% will be our proteins and 25% will be our starches slash carbohydrates. And for those of you guys that have your uh, Dr. A's Habits of Health material, this is all outlined and chapters, I believe, uh, 9, 10, 11, maybe even 12. So it gives yeah. you great, great visuals. 
Yeah, you know, and I, I love that, Jamil. You hit it right on the nose. It's like how many times do you go to a restaurant and the plate is like this big? What's that? I don't know, 18 inches? It's probably like <laughs> double a nine-inch plate. And what do they have on there? Like your rice and beans and burrito, or I, I guess I go to Mexican food a lot. But it's all the starches, like the whole plate. So, and some people go, well, I'm, I'm going to be too hungry if I just have a small plate. But what do we have to remember? How many times do we eat a day? Six times. Yeah, yeah another six thing, times. Interesting thing is uh, that starches section, 25%. That's maximum, 25%. It doesn't mean that you have to have starches. Um, and uh, in the optimization phase, when you're maintaining a healthy weight and stuff, there are often times where we, we don't have starches on our plates. We have a nice lean and green meal. Uh, you're going to get those good, healthy carbohydrates from that, those vegetables and the uh, smaller portion of fruits. Um, and uh, also another thing, just a little uh, tid, extra tidbit, like when, if we're having something like, uh, she makes fantastic French bread. If we're having French bread, that's my dessert. I'm not going to have a dessert after dinner, and I'm going to make sure that I'm having a really solid, healthy, lean and green meal. Um, and uh, if I am going to have a dessert after dinner, um, as part of my optimization plan and stuff, I'm going to go straight lean and green, no extra starches at dinner time. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, thank you, Jamil. That was a great rundown of nine inch plate. And this is to be utilized in optim optimization phase, of course. If you're on five and one, then make sure you're reading your Optimia guide and you're sticking to your, to your uh, specifications. Okay, well, to wrap up, we have four more minutes left. Um, I thought that maybe Jamil and Liz could each share a little bit of their story. Um, so I'm going to throw it to, to Liz first um, to share what, what was your experience um, with, the, with the program so far? Um, great, thanks. Um, I love sharing my story because honestly the program has changed my life completely, not just physically but mentally um, also and my family's life. So I've always been really into health and fitness, um, loved reading health and fitness books, love going to the gym. Um, I loved being healthy. But as I um, got married and had had children, I've had six kids. And each of those pregnancies brought on 50 to 60 pounds, no matter how hard I tried, uh, I would just gain the weight. And so trying to lose weight after having a baby could be really depressing and um, a big struggle, you don't have a lot of time to um, spend on yourself. And so um, I was very thankful Amber and Jared, they're actually my health coaches, and they introduced us to the program. And um, I was just so grateful to find something that actually worked um, that was very simple. Um, I did the nursing mom's program um, after my fifth and sixth baby. And honestly, my only regret is that I didn't find this 12 years ago after my first baby. Um, but after I found it, I just wanted to like share it from the rooftops. Every woman that's ever had a baby needs this program. Everyone needs it, but I just wanted to be able to share it with everyone because it's completely changed my, my, my life physically. And then just all the education that comes from it um, has been such a blessing. Um, and so, and I love that it's simple and it's something that you can do long-term and it's not a fad or, you know, a short-term thing, but it's something that will really change your life if you embrace it. Awesome, Liz. Jamil, wrap us up. All right, with pleasure. Uh, I think for me, uh, Amber and Jared, you know, I was just, I was extremely frustrated before I found this program. As I alluded to, for about a year and a half before that, I was trying to exercise my extra weight off. And the fact that it was not happening, and especially at the rate that I had anticipated, um, you know, we see inspiration on the page. That's not exactly what I was having at that point. And so, um, you know, when you... I grew up an athlete. I uh, played college football on scholarship. But to Liz's point, once, once I got married and once we got pregnant with our first child and started working more and more hours at work, it just became very, very challenging to eat healthy and exercise consistently. And the, that whole mindfulness thing, I didn't even know what that was. I was just kind of like operating um, like a, a robot and just taking in whatever was there because my days were so busy. And I was so blessed to find this program, and I was a little bit skeptical. I think like many, many people are or were 
And my first week, I, I stood on the scale. I can remember like it was yesterday. And I got off and I got back on. And I got off and I got back on because I just couldn't believe that I had lost uh, that much. And then uh, to go on to reach my goal weight, which I never thought that I could be able to do, I just remember um, trying on a suit that I got married in. And it was one of those custom fit suits. And, you know, you want to look really good for your wedding. I went on a big crash diet right before the wedding and gained all that weight back about a week later. But that suit I can never fit again. And now that suit was actually too big for me. And I think, um, you know, as I had to share this, I really did. And, and as I was losing, many, many people were asking. But one of my big things was, in, in all honesty, uh, I never really uh, looked at the book when I was a client. I was just looking for weight loss. I just, you know, was looking for a diet. But I was really, really nervous about keeping that weight off because I'd done that whole yo-yo thing for about 10 years before I found this program. And my coach was so beautiful. And she said, and it just made sense. And she says, you know, if you really want to optimize, if you really want to figure this thing out, if you really want to um, stop that whole start-stop thing and and have this health be a continuum in your life, you should think about paying it for it. And not until I actually started working with clients did I open up that book and I started studying and I started to understand um, what these things meant. And uh, it's been the greatest decision probably that I've ever made. And uh, you know, I've been able to just get better and better and better. And so I have people in my house. So it's been, it's been a great ride. Awesome, Jamil. What a great transition because we're going to, um, the, the Habits of Health call is done now and thank you for joining us. But I really want to encourage everyone to just stick around because um, directly after this call, we're going to talk a little bit about becoming a health coach. And it may or may not be for you, but I'd love to say, uh, why not explore it? I mean, maybe you have a few extra minutes now and uh, you're already on, so maybe stick around and we'll, we'll have some others joining us who, who are coming on just to watch, um, to learn about becoming a health coach. So we're just gonna um, go ahead and start that in just one minute. So thank you. Thank you, Jamil and Liz for helping us so far. Stick around. <laughs> Preceding audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Take Shape for Life health coaches or clients. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to healthy living and weight loss will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a physician before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Take Shape for Life team.